Hello, today we're going to talk about cycle cart spokes. So the rear wheel takes a lot of punishment on hard right or left turns. Typically uh, the outside wheel on the outside of the turn, I've seen where they almost curves over where the rim is here and, the, and the, it just buckles and it puts a lot of strain and stress on the spokes. They stretch, and eventually they start breaking. That's what happened on my red cart. Uh, the mono wasp behind me also had some broken spokes. I had a bunch of OEMs, so I replaced them, just individual spokes. But um, the red Ford had a lot of broken spokes, and they were getting loose, and they were powder coated. So when they're powder coated, they're almost impossible to tighten because the powder coating's in the way. So I elected just to respoke the whole wheel. So I ordered new uh, spokes online from eBay. Uh, the size you're going to look for is 10 by 160 or 10 by 161. That's apparently the OEM size. Uh, 10 is close to 3.2 millimeters, I believe, at least according to the ads on eBay. Uh, what I received was 12 by 159. Probably okay for the front wheel, but not strong enough for the back. You want the pretty, you want the thickest spoke you can put on there. Even if you have to drill out the wheels, if you have OEM Hondas, you might have to drill them to make them fit. I had one wheel that had already been drilled because I respoked it when I first got it. Uh, the other wheel had the original OEM spokes on it, so when I bought the new spokes, I had to slightly open up the holes on the rim itself because the, the nipples wouldn't quite fit. The nipples on the OEM are a little bit smaller. This is the original OEM. Just the diameter right here is smaller than what the replacement was. And I got aftermarket spokes. Uh, the Honda uh, OEM spokes that you might find on eBay might fit perfect. I don't know because I didn't get those. Um, any anyway, rate, so you want to make sure you got the right size, which is a 10 or 10 gauge 160 millimeters or 161 millimeters. I've seen posts online where people talk about getting a longer spoke and then spoking your entire wheel and then grinding off the excess where maybe the spoke comes up through the nipple into the where the tire or the inner tube would be. That's fine, I guess, but it's a lot easier to get the right size. Um, if you could find a nine by 160, that would really be good, or an eight by one would be a big thick spoke. Um, I think they would be a lot more durable. I, I couldn't find those. I mean, they, they may exist. I just didn't run across them. Um, one of the primary things that I found out, and I forgot this from three years ago when I spoke to them originally, but there's an inside and an outside. So um, if you look at these, there's a slight difference. This one here is almost a 90 degree angle uh, at the bend right here, whereas this one has a little bit more, it's a little more of a gentle angle. So when you get them, they're not going to be, they may not be packaged right, uh, inside and outside. You'll have to separate them. Uh, I had a few that were questionable as to which were which. I think there might have been just, you know, because they were aftermarket may not be very good quality control compared to the OEM Honda, which are obviously different. Um, I had a couple that were I was like, oh, I can't really tell the difference. So just make a decision and go with it. Um, so the ones with the tight turn are the outer, which means, um, and this is the inner. So the, the 90 degree bend on your hub, if you're looking at it from the outside, is going to be mounted, so you're going to see it, this part of it, that's the outer. The inner is going to be, just like it sounds, it's mounted from the inside, so this this thing is, you're going to see this on the outside, the little round piece, so let me take it down to the wheel here. This is, sorry, this is the outer, and this one here is the inner, so the, the inner's got the little circle part. The outer is not, it looks like it's mounted from the outside. It actually comes in from the, when you thread it, you come in from the inside to the outside. But this is the outer, that's the inner. So that's how you keep those straight as far as, I'm oh, sorry, my hand got totally in front, I did it again, totally in front of the camera. Um, so that's how you keep those straight. And there's a reason, I'm not sure exactly why they're bent that way, but that's how they work. And at least according to the internet. That's how I built mine, that's how they seem to work just fine. Um, I'm not going to show you exactly how to lace a wheel. There's lots of videos to do that. People with a lot more experience than I do. Uh, once you watch a few of those YouTube videos, it's pretty easy, um, not terribly complicated. The complicated part is truing it. I learned a lesson. I bought a stand uh, from Harbor Freight for truing the wheel, just a bracket with a, a rod and two little shaped uh, adjustable pieces that clamp the wheel, basically. And I think ideally, if you had bearings, it would work great. But these wheels, we've removed the bearings, um, and you're using these modified things so the bearings don't exactly fit at least for the rear the front have bearings you could probably use those and it would work great but the harbor freight one at least in my experience because it didn't have a bearing it every time i moved it the wheel would move a little bit and i thought i had it adjusted and, and next thing you know it's, it's wobbling again because it's not 
not adjusted so or not set just perfectly so what i found out was on the red car when i redid those i just used a fixture put the wheels on the hub put the hubs on and i what i did was i lined up the valve stem with the set screw on the hub so if the wheel if the anything's slightly out of round i take the wheel off i put the wheel back on it's gonna be right back in the same spot so just in case I've indexed it to that hub, if the hub is not perfectly true or square, um, the wheel will always be in that spot. So as long as you don't move them right to left, it should stay true. Um, and in doing that, I realized that, because I had borrowed a fixture from Dennis Thomas a while back and had a little magnet thing, and it worked great. Um, so I basically built something similar to that um, to work on the mono wasp, because I've just got the hubs milled because they were a little bit out around, the hubs were not quite perfectly flat so I had uh, Jack at Carco, Vintage Carco milled those for me so they're perfectly flat now so now I've got to re-true the spokes on that so the first thing I did let the air out of the tire and I loosened all the spokes where they're just finger tight so we're basically starting from scratch there's no like uh, not fighting against memory or whatever so let me show you what that fixture is that I built okay so this is a fixture I built this is just some little angle pieces of metal that I bolted together in a triangle and it wobbled a little bit so I just mounted it to this piece of wood that seems to stabilize it and I bolted a little piece of steel on here and this is just a little piece of um, rod it's just loose it. you could put a set of screw here I guess but I, I decided just to let it sit there because it's just going to sit there to index as I spin the wheel you can tell if it's moving or not maybe this is not the best angle. let me get the camera over here so you can see as the wheel goes around, it goes in and out a little bit. So probably not holding the camera perfectly square. So anyway, the idea is to, to set this tool in place at the highest point. So almost where the where it almost touches the rim as it goes around. And then you can really see where it's in and out. So there's other videos to show you exactly how to true a wheel. So I'm not gonna show you exactly that, but it's kind of showing things unique to cycle karting. Um, and that primarily being that we're using this on the on the cart and I've got this again I've indexed this valve stem hole to the on the other side sorry good grief to this right here so this the valve stems right above that just so if I ever take the wheel off I know exactly where it goes back on um, just in case it is indexed to the hub anyway that made sense to me hope it makes sense to you if it should help something helps you get your wheels true um, especially after relacing. If you haven't relaced them, they're probably pretty straight to begin with. But if they're not, um, like I said, there's lots of videos online as to how to true your wheels. So anyway, that's a little fixture I built. Pretty simple. You can easily build something similar to that. Um, so anyway, I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not going to show you exactly how to lace or true a wheel. That's a, you know, there's other videos that do that. I just kind of show you things unique to the cycle carts. If you have any questions on this or anything I can help you with, um, please leave a comment or a question. Thanks for watching our videos. Uh, that's the end of this one. I uh, hope it was helpful to you. Uh, like and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, ArizonaCycleCartClub.com, or Arizona Cycle Cart Club on Facebook. Uh, CycleCartClub.com is the website where we, we post a lot of stuff. Uh, all of our events and activities are on there. Stuff from Titan Grand Prix, the Clarkdale Grand Prix, Scottsdale Grand Prix, all the stuff that the Arizona group participates in, and a bunch of other stuff we do throughout the year. Uh, I'm going to continue making these little short videos. Hopefully they're helpful to you. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.